Hello, uh, this is in response to Stoodle's Race and IQ. Uh, Stoodle's, uh, I wrote you a response uh, regarding, it, regarding your um, theory that there are genetic differences between races in IQ intelligence quotient, in the intelligence quotient. And my response to you was that you guys, the race realists have failed to establish their burden of proof necessary to validate that theory. And I tried to give you a p comparison to measure the standard of proof that you need to to um, establish any credibility in your theory. And that was male superiority in strength compared to females. That is what I would say is the standard, the you know, the test or the standard of proof that you need to come close to in terms of um, this racial IQ theory. And what I mean by meeting that standard of proof is not necessarily having similar evidence, but the quantity of evidence. Basically, what that means is that when you compare two equal environments between two population groups one is gene and one is superior in that environment um, then you can make that case but you would have to do that but see when you're talking about race and race and IQ and gender and strength you would have to compare compare similar environments in many instances like I don't can't give you a number but in many instances it's not just one when you compare similar environments in gender strength, similar environments, you find that men, vastly in general, are stronger than women. It is such a blatantly obvious, obvious fact that we have segregated sports, especially where strength is um, a major, one of the major factors. For example, football. We're not going to have women we may have one, maybe some freak of nature, but we're not going to have, I don't think we're going to have any women playing in the NFL with men, okay? That's the same thing for basketball. There might be one female that possibly be able to do it based upon her strength, but still that would, her strength would be based upon how much she works out, her conditioning. I mean, there's no doubt that a woman can become, can become stronger than some men or even above, above many men or most men but here's the thing these women are far and few between and number two a man who works out and uses the same effort you know has the same workout hours is still going to be as stronger than that woman the disparity and the disparity is going to be as great as and the average man who doesn't work out above the age of 15 and the average woman who doesn't work out. If the disparity is not going to dis decrease. That percentage of disparity is going to be almost exactly the same. Okay. Now when we compare the IQ, when you add a significant factor, like for example income, the disparity may still exist, but the disparity, the IQ, the poor percentage decreases. Okay, you guys are saying that, well, you know, just because we compare different economic groups and we compare, you know, blacks that go to the same schools as these white kids and they still have, and the disparity still exists. But what you guys do not add is that the disparity often, not all the time, often is decreased. The disparity in points decreases. Like, for example, if, let's say, for example, a black kid that goes, a black black kids that go to predominantly white schools, the IQ difference may be 10, per, 10 instead of 15. Or if it's, it stops at 10, it goes down to 5. Now, you now race realists will say, well, that shows that whites have superior genes in, in the IQ and they have an evolutionary advantage. No, it doesn't. Because what you guys fail to point out is that there's also cultural attitudes toward education in with black kids that go to predominantly white schools okay you didn't measure the study time invested okay because 
there's a disparity between even in even in schools where blacks are the minority there's a disparity in study time between white and black kids now I don't have to study this on this but I'm going to say that I know this based upon my experience and just based upon how some black kids go into um, predominantly white schools okay for instance if those black kids let's say for instance a black guy black woman you know they spent grades one through six in the inner city black school where education you know education frankly is not as valued or not valued at all, valued at all compared to the suburban white school and that black woman or black not black woman black girl or black boy goes and moves to a suburban school and is counted as that person that you're measuring you know you know you know the race that you're measuring in the predominantly uh, white school of course there's a possibility that the disparity still could still be there because that black boy and black girl are going to carry that cultural value or that cultural attitude toward education to the predominantly white school so frankly your theory that that doesn't prove her hereditary superiority at all you guys have not you guys continue to fail to add in the effort I mean until I see until I see the african-american community community as a whole value education as much as white kids then this discussion shouldn't even be discussed and to be honest with you I mean you guys are jumping the gun right here we have not done everything toward education and I'm not talking we're not going to use white kid blame whitey okay <laughs> we gonna blame blackie <laughs> okay this uh, in this video we're gonna blame blackie so all those race realists that are worried about getting blamed whitey you know the blame whitey mentality which really is behind this race realism for most of you guys we're not gonna do that we're gonna blame blackie <laughs> okay until until African Americans you know and not just African Americans because everyone's picking on African Americans like you know African Americans have like you know somehow they're the only minority group that doesn't value education I got I'm West Indian and I got people in England black Britons which uh, r originated from Jamaica that don't value education either okay and the African immigrants are beating them so West Indians here are not superior to African Americans in any way or form period okay that's just somehow there's something within that culture black Britain's culture and African Americans culture which is actually they're kind of very similar that's like saying that education shouldn't be valued I don't know why and I do also want to mention that there's dark-skinned black African Americans, also dark black-skinned black Britons that do very well in education. So it's not everybody, everybody in that population group. But in general, there's a there's a significant less value toward education. Until that is fixed, I don't, I'm not hearing about race reality and all this other stuff. You guys have not given me any quantified measurement of the study time put in into education. And this other thing about, you know, it's the IQ is fixed. Well, I haven't seen any consider any effort or you know, any studies that said we've done an effort, you know, we trained for the IQ, we've done practice tests for the IQ, and, you know, the same person has the same score. I haven't heard any of those evidence. I haven't heard any evidence like that. But the bottom line is that, you know, that's just basically it. I mean, I think I said enough of what I, I had to say. So, and that, have a nice day.